You're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website, culips.com. C U L I P S dot com. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew, and I'm Jeremy, and you're listening to Culips. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? It's going pretty well for me. How about yourself? Actually, I had an interesting experience happen to me about two weeks ago. I was riding the bus to work, and there was nobody on the bus.、Huh. I was the only one on the bus. Wow, that is very strange in Korea. This was about eight a.m. in the morning, and usually the bus is packed at this time. But there was no one, and I couldn't understand why. Why is there no one on the bus? <laughs> so strange. <laughs> but <laughs> kind of felt like I had a private limo to myself. You know, it's a big bus. Yeah. Yeah. As I was approaching my destination, we passed a high school, and it was at that moment that it clicked. Oh, today is the day Korean high school students write the Korean SAT, and I realized, oh, they're writing their test today, and it's a big deal over here in Korea when the high school students write this test. The country kind of stops in the morning. <laughs> yeah, planes. Yeah, planes stop. Companies allow their employees to come in later. The police even dictate traffic flow so that the students aren't late for the test. And that's why I was the only one on the bus because everybody else <laughs> stayed at home so that the students would have no problem getting to school to write this exam. Wow, so this got me thinking about high school final exams. It's very serious over here in Korea, as maybe now our listeners can imagine. But Jeremy, since you're from the USA and I'm from Canada, I thought we could talk about the final exams in our countries. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. All right, so we'll do that today. In this chatterbox episode, but just before we start, I'd like to tell everyone that there is a study guide for this episode available for download on our website culips.com. So if you're interested in taking your English studies to the next level, getting a little bit more serious about English, then you'll want to check out that study guide. Just visit culips.com for all the details. So hey Andrew, yes, I noticed something interesting when you were telling that story. I noticed that you say write a test. Write a test.、Mm -hmm. In the U.S., we say take a test.、Mm, take a test. Write a test. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, both sound okay to me. Oh really? Okay.、Mm -hmm. I ha I don't think I've heard to write a test in. In the U.S., I haven't heard that before. A Canadianism. <laughs> in a previous episode, you mentioned that there are still a lot of expressions from England, sort of UK English, that are used in Canada. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Yes. So that might be a legacy. Of England, <laughs> we're holding on to write a test, but I use them interchangeably. I think I would also say take a test, and I would call a student who is writing a test a test taker, not a test writer. Not a test writer. No, a test writer would be the person who creates the test. Yes. Yeah. Same here. Very interesting. So let's get into it a little bit. 
Jeremy, you're from the States. What mm-hmm. do students in the States, high school students in the States, do before they graduate? What kind of test do they have to take? Well, we have a test called the SAT, which stands for Scholastic Aptitude Test, mm-hmm. or sometimes called Scholastic Assessment Test. Okay. Scholastic means... Means like your academic ability, sort of? Yeah. Scholar. Scholar, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the same root word as scholar. Uh, And it's meant to measure students' academic ability. Right. Mm -hmm. And what about yours? Well, in Canada, every province has a different system. So I can really only speak confidently about my province, which is British Columbia. In British Columbia, we have what's called a provincial exam. Mm. There are several provincial exams that cover different subjects. So for example, at the same time, you don't cover all the subjects. You don't write one test that covers math, history, English, for example. You will write an English provincial exam. So one test that is all about English. Then you'll write a history provincial exam. One exam that's all about history. And there are provincial exams for all of the senior level subjects in high school. So all of the sciences, math, uh, the social sciences like psychology and geography and history, these all have provincial exams. Now, of course, as a student, I didn't have to write all of them. I think I had to write five provincial exams in the subjects that I chose to specialize in in high school. So when you're a senior in high school, maybe about grade 10 when you're around 15 years old, you have to choose a path. You can take uh, a science-based path or a math-based path, or a humanities-based path. I Mm, chose to study humanities-based set of subjects. So the provincial exams that I ended up writing were English, English literature, geography, history. I think that's it. I think those were the only exams that I had to write. So are these in are these different individual exams? So you like you take them on separate days? Exactly. So oh, wow. We don't have one exam day. We have a whole exam period. Oh, interesting. And it will last about a week or two weeks and you come in to the school, write the exam for think you have a maximum period of three hours write the exam then go home relax rest for a little bit and then go back a different day to write another exam for a different subject Mm, interesting wow i did not know that yeah so these provincial exams are important for well graduating from high school because they're worth 40 percent of your final grade So if you fail, that can have some pretty serious consequences because if you didn't do very well overall and then you fail the provincial exam, it might just mean that you fail the whole class and have to do it again the next year, (laughs) which does happen from time to time. Wow. That would not be fun if that happened to me. (laughs) No, (laughs) I, I agree. And also, it's important for entrance into universities. So when you apply to universities, they will want to know what your provincial exam score is. So they can be quite powerful, these exams. I remember being stressed out about having to write them and and worried. But I also kind of liked it, like... I thought it really brought the students together. I felt a kind of kinship with my fellow exam takers. Like we were all in the same place at the same time, 
writing the same exam. In battle together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all went through this similar experience. Mm -hmm. and, and not just me, all of the students in the province. So even my friends that were at different high schools, I remember after writing the exam, we hung out and talked about, oh, what did you write for that essay question? What did you uh, say for this question? Uh, that was that was fun. Oh, so how different do you think it is in Korea? Well, in Korea, I don't know because I haven't written the test exactly, but I think that it's more of a standardized test with multiple choice responses where mm. there are some multiple choice questions on the provincial exams in Canada, but there are a lot of essay questions and um, short response, paragraph response questions. So it's not necessarily knowing the facts or there's not necessarily a test strategy. You really have to demonstrate that you know your stuff, that you know what you're talking about. Because, I mean, if you have an essay question and you don't know how to respond to it, you can't guess, right? You can't just circle B. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to write something. Right. So I think the study strategies really differ between the two countries. So is there any multiple choice on the provincial exams? There is a short multiple choice section at the beginning, as far as I remember, maybe 10 or 20 questions. And then the rest are response where you have to provide an answer yourself. Interesting. This all sounds very similar to the SAT uh, test, mm -hmm. but uh, one major difference is, as far as I remember, the SAT score doesn't affect whether you graduate from high school or not, but it does affect whether you get into university or not. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, in America, we say college. Right. Although this is the incorrect term, college means a two-year institution. Mm -hmm. But everywhere else in the world, they correctly say university. And I have <laughs> learned to fix my speech, so I don't say that anymore. But okay. the organization that governs the SAT exam is called the College Board. Oh, okay. So the SAT is more of a college entrance exam or an exam that measures your scholastic ability okay. and gives you a score. And universities use that score in conjunction, in combination, with your grades to determine whether you should be admitted to their university or not. So what do you remember about your SAT? What, what subjects were covered? Yeah... It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> been a while. Uh, I'm not that old, but uh, it does seem like a long time ago. I remember most of it being multiple choice. Okay. I remember there was uh, a quite lengthy section about vocabulary with lots of difficult words, some of which that I had never heard or seen before. Mm -hmm. um, I also remember there was a writing section where you had to show your reasoning abilities, okay. to show your critical thinking abilities. Mm -hmm. There was also a math section. Oh, no. But I don't remember much about what was on it. So it starts out with a reading comprehension section with different passages from books or articles and questions about that text to check your comprehension. There's also a, a writing section, uh, as well as some fill in the blanks and some vocabulary questions. And then there's uh, a mathematics section. And I remember that we were able to use calculators, but in the past, I don't think that was allowed. All right. So you caught a lucky break being able to use a calculator. <laughs> yeah, it, it made things a lot easier. For our listeners who don't know, 
I also lived in Korea for four years. Mm -hmm. uh, I no longer live in Korea, but while I was there, I, I learned a lot about the Sunung, the Korean college entrance exam, kind of like the SAT. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that Americans take the test as seriously as Korean students do. In Korea, it seems like your, your Sunung score determines your whole life path. But in the U.S., it seems less important, a little bit less important. It, it is still very important, but not quite so much as in Korea. There's been a scandal over here in Korea. Oh, no. Really? Where Second. a couple of high school students, two girls mm -hmm. actually, their mm -hmm. father was an administrator at the same high school that they were attending. And he had access to the safe and he broke into the safe and fed his daughters the correct test answers. Oh my gosh. And when this scandal came to light, there was huge outrage, which really showed to me that, oh, this exam is serious. Like people are angry that these girls and their father were cheating to the extent that my Korean friend said that the father will likely go to jail and the girls will likely have to leave the country. Like they, it's oh finished life in Korea for them. Oh my gosh. Wow. So this showed me like, wow, this is serious stuff. This exam, if this happens in Canada for the provincial exams, the girls would probably fail and the father would probably be fired, but it would all blow over in a couple weeks. Their lives and their reputations wouldn't be ruined forever. Yeah, that seems a bit too extreme to me, but I understand <laughs> why in Korea it's so competitive that doing something like that is considered a heinous act. A very, very evil act, right? Yes. Yeah, indeed. It's serious, serious business. So don't cheat if you come over here and take a test. <laughs> <laughs> That's my advice. I think we'll wrap it up here, but I am really quite curious about how our listeners graduated from high school, what type of exams they had to write before they graduated high school and went to university. So guys, please tell us about your experience. I'd love to hear. You can send us an email at contact at qlips.com or you could reach us through our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Qlips podcast. And for more information about our study guides or to listen to older Qlips episodes, again, all of that is on our website, qlips.com. So please remember to check it out. That is it for us today. We'll be back soon with another episode and we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone.